Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Welcome back from lunch, and thank you for, for making it to this presentation on what's new in protocol documentation. Um, as Beth said, my name is Jason Fisher. I'm a senior content developer here at Microsoft. Um, if at any point you can't hear me, um, just raise your hand or, or let me know, um, and I'll make an adjustment to the, the microphone placement. So let's just take a quick look at the agenda, what we'll be talking about for the next, oh, about 35 minutes or so. Um, we'll start by talking a little bit about who the Windows Protocol documentation content team is and a little bit uh, of what we mean by new when we say what's new in protocol documentation. Um, then I'd like to take you on a tour of some of the new features in protocol documentation. This will include things like preview versions of our protocol documents, uh, overview documents and network captures. Um, we publish a topic online called What's New and Changed, which we hope you'll find very useful. We'll talk a little bit about the individual protocol document landing pages, including noting previous document versions and diff files, uh, as well as the addition of some information about license programs and support. I'll take a couple of minutes to talk to you about protocol errata. Uh, then I'll show you a, a, an early look at a project we have underway right now, bringing SKU to roll mapping tables to some of our protocol documents. And we'll finish up with a look at some of the very high level look, I should note, uh, look at some of our recently added protocol documents. Uh, and then I'll take any questions that you might have. So who are we? And what do we mean when we say new? The Windows Protocols content team is a group of about nine writers. Uh, some of them are in the room. If any of you, any of my colleagues are in the room, wave. And um, yes, there's several of us here. Um, we are programmer writers here at Microsoft, and we each own a technical area in Windows protocols. Um, mine is remote desktop protocol, for example. So I own all of the various RDP protocols, including the RDP overview document. I handle the uh, document bugs that come in. Many of them come from uh, folks such as yourself. Um, my colleagues own different areas, such as file services, Active Directory, things of that nature. Um, we also have editors on our team. We also have program managers. We work directly with support and escalation engineers. We work with our Shanghai test team. Um, and we also interact directly with the various features engineering teams here at Microsoft. And uh, you can think of the, the primary writer or the programmer writer in charge of a technical area. You can think of this person kind of like a project leader on a, a virtual team, a V-team, consisting of writers, editors, PMs, developers, testers, and so on, um, where ultimately the buck stops with us. Uh, the writers are the ones responsible for ensuring that the protocol documents are complete, accurate, and reliable for all of you. Also, when you find issues, um, oversights, or errors, and you report those to support, um, you will get a workaround, and then you might wonder what happens after that. Eventually, those issues make their way to the writers as well, um, usually coming through the engineering teams, but not always. And uh, it, again, it is the, the uh, programmer writers in charge of these protocol documents who end up making those corrections to them. Uh, so what do we mean by what's new? By the time we're finished with this presentation, some of you might be saying, well, gosh, I knew about that, and I knew about that. So the most obvious answer is obviously the things that are, that are brand new, the things that have come out with our most recent document release. That, in fact, was just about three weeks ago, June 1st of 2017. So I will be talking about some features that were newly introduced then. But I'm also going to talk about some features that are a year or two old, um, and in one case, even a little older than that. And why am I doing that? The reason is because when we've talked with implementers such as yourselves, we've often found that many of these features and improvements that we've made to our documentation experience are still not very well known. Um, if you knew about them at one time, you may have forgotten, or in some cases, you may never have discovered some of these features. Um, also, What's new to protocol documentation in many cases is you. As I understand it, there are a number of implementers here at PlugFest this year for the first time. And so a, a special welcome to all of you. Uh, for those of you who are new, 
uh, most everything that I'll talk about will probably be new. But even for the seasoned veterans, I'm hoping that a few of the slides you'll see uh, might be material that's unfamiliar to you, or if you did once know about it, perhaps you'd forgotten and you could use a, what I hope will be a worthwhile refresher. So let's jump right into a tour of new features in our protocol documentation. The first of these that I want to talk about is preview versions. So what are these? Well, preview versions are essentially early versions of our protocol documents containing preliminary content that pertains to some upcoming product release. Um, we try to release these in advance. Uh, you could think of this sort of as like the, the in the old days, a public beta, or there may be a thing like a community technology preview, um, the insiders programs, things of that nature. So we like to bring early content to you when we can. Um, obviously, it is subject to change. Preview versions themselves are not new. We've been doing this for a very long time. What is new, and what I'd like to talk about here, is the fact that we've now located these preview versions closer to our actual technical specifications themselves. And we've done a lot of work in our documentation experience to try to make these much more discoverable than they used to be. You'll now find links to the preview documentation in a number of different places. Um, first of all, they'll be on the main Windows Protocols page, which looks like this. I don't expect you all to be able to read this, especially not in the back of the room, but I wanted to give you a screenshot to give you an idea of what it looks like on MSDN. Uh, and so, as you can see, this is the top level page for Windows Protocols all up. Uh, and we've added an, a section that I've highlighted at the bottom for preview versions where we explain what they are when, in general terms when you expect to see them and, uh, and where to find them. We've also added some preview version information uh, into the main navigation in the table of contents in the MSDN experience. And so this is that same screenshot zoomed in a little further so hopefully you can read. Uh, and you'll notice here under protocols, Windows protocols, then you'll see preview version. So it's right there, uh, immediately adjacent to the rest of our uh, protocols documentation. We've also added it to the technical documents page. This is the top level page for the individual Windows protocols taken as a collection. This is a very, very, very lengthy page, so I didn't attempt to do a screenshot of the whole thing. Uh, it, it would have looked like you were viewing it from 100 miles away. We have uh, uh, approaching 470 Windows protocol documents, and they're all listed on this page. So what I've done is I've taken a screenshot at the top and at the bottom, uh, just to give you an idea of what the page looks like in general, in its tabular format. And then at the bottom of the page, once again, you will find the information about preview versions, uh, what they are, and where to find them. And finally, we've also added this to the individual landing pages for our protocol documents. We're going to talk about those landing pages again in a moment. This is an example of one of those. This is one of my protocols. This is an RDP protocol. and in, in fact, this is a new one. And a little later, remember, we're going to talk about new protocols. Um, so as you can see, the way the landing page is organized, the preview versions content appears roughly in the middle of the page. Again, I've highlighted that. Um, so to sum up, we've essentially added links to the preview versions of our documents just about everywhere. There's very, very little excuse now not to be able to find these. And we hope you will be taking a look at them. So let's talk a little bit next about overview documents and network captures. Um, you're going to hear a little bit more about overview documents and about one of them in particular on Thursday after lunch. Um, I'll mention that again in a moment. Um, but essentially what overview documents do, it's rather, rather obvious they provide an overview of interrelated protocols arranged by technical area. So we have a series of overview documents for Active Directory, for RDP, for file services, for authentication, um, essentially you name it. And this is sort of a larger bucket into which the individual protocols are organized. It's higher level conceptual content designed to orient you. Um, it's a great reference especially for new implementers to see how protocols interrelate. Where do you find them? These are located under the Windows Protocols node, and then there's a table of contents item called Overview Documents, and you'll see that in a moment in the screenshot that I'll show. Um, I wanted to note that for each Overview document that we publish, 
we provide the current published version, and we are also now, over the past year or a little more, providing several previous versions of the overview documents. Um, we provide those in PDF and DOCX formats. We also are providing Word diff files, and those are in PDF format as well. We realize that some of you are using different file formats, but uh, we hope you'll find these useful, uh, especially for making past comparisons. Um, also, for the current version of the overview documents and for one or more previous versions, we provide an annotated network capture file, um, and that is in message analyzer format. We also realize many of you are using other network monitoring tools, things like Wireshark, things of that nature. Um, but again, we hope you may find this useful. And this is what an overview document looks like. Uh, this one is MS. FSMOD. This is the File Services Management Protocols Overview. You'll notice at the top of the page there is a description of this overview document. Uh, then there's a table for the published version. Uh, you'll see very clearly the date this version was published as well as the revision of this document. This is version number five that we've released of this overview document. The revision class is generally things like none, new, minor, major, fairly self-explanatory. Um, and then the downloads column is where you can download this content in PDF, DOCX. Uh, there's a diff between this version and the previous version, and then also the network capture, which I've highlighted. Um, also want to point out uh, the table of contents on the left. Again, notice that under protocols, you find Windows protocols, and then overview documents. That's where this lives. Um, you can also browse all of the content online uh, arranged into uh, the various sections with each page on MSDN corresponding to a section of the document. That's the same content that you would download in PDF or DOCX format. We also publish a piece of content on MSDN called What's New and Changed. And this is not something that you download if you download the, the documentation set. This is something that's just published to the, the web. Um, this is also located under Windows Protocols. The node to click on is called What's New and Changed. This is at the same level in the table of contents as overview documents and preview documents, the two items that we just talked about. Um, this content covers new protocols, updated protocols, and then, of course, any protocols that might have been deprecated in the last release. And it describes changes made to each protocol in the most recent document release. So when do we release documents? Most of the time, this coincides with planned product releases, things like a new version of Windows client or server. Client and server, in fact, sometimes coincide, but not always, um, as well as SQL Server, which we also own. Um, but we do sometimes update documents with out-of-band protocol changes as well. This can occur in response to a security incident, for example, or there may be a, a DCR, a design change request, um, or QFEs in which case you might see a knowledge base article or something of that nature. Whenever these kinds of engineering changes result in uh, something changing across the wire, then we will update our documentation to reflect that. Additionally, we do some periodic documentation updates of our own. Uh, these will be, for example, to incorporate TDIs, technical documentation issues, some of which you may have reported, some of which we may have found uh, on our own or our test team in Shanghai may have brought to our attention. So we'll periodically republish documents to incorporate all of those, um, as well as other changes, maybe changes in uh, document template or additions of boilerplate or things of that nature. So this is what that content looks like online. Um, again, notice under protocols, this is the table of contents at the left under protocols, then expand Windows protocols, and then there it is, what's new and changed. Um, so you can see at the top of the document, uh, we have a new protocol specification here. Uh, this is MSVSOD. This was a new overview document on virtual storage. On Thursday after lunch at 1 p.m., um, some of my colleagues are going to be taking a deeper dive into that overview document, and they'll be talking a little bit more about overview documents in general. Underneath the new section is the updated section. This is by far the lengthiest, usually, on this page. And you'll see it will be, it will indicate the date, and it will indicate 
which specifications uh, were updated, and there's a description of the changes that were made. This is intended to be fairly high level, fairly concise, but it should offer enough information uh, to give you an idea of whether you're interested in this update or whether it might impact your implementations. Um, so again, refer to this page and uh, we hope it's helpful to you. If you find uh, that it's not, let us know. If you find that it is, we love positive feedback as well. So let's take a look at the landing pages for individual Windows Protocol documents. This is something we started doing again, uh, I think a little bit more than a year ago, and we've been refining it ever since. Uh, we would love feedback on this from you. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is the previous versions and diffs, and, and you might remember I mentioned that the overview documents also provide previous versions and diffs, so we do that for each individual Windows protocol document as well. Um, we intend these landing pages to be as I say here, a convenient top-level web page for each one. And again, there are more than 450 of them. Uh, so it's helpful to have a, a top-level landing page for each one. Uh, this would be something you could bookmark or email around to a colleague. Um, and for each protocol document here, again, we provide the current published version, and we also are now providing a number of previous versions. And again, those are available in PDF and DOCX formats and we're also providing Word diffs, uh, Word format diffs in PDF. And here's an example of an individual protocol document landing page. This one is for MSADTS. This is one of my colleague Paul's documents, uh, Active Directory Technical Specification. Um, again, similar to the overview documents. At the top of the page, we have a uh, concise summary of what this protocol is. Then we have a table for the published version indicating the date when it was published, and the revision. As you can see here, this is a, quite a mature protocol. This is up to version 45. And the revision class, in this case, major. And then the downloads, PDF, DOCX, and DIFF. Uh, you'll notice we don't provide capture files for individual protocols. Um, and then there's the previous versions as well. And this table goes all the way back to the beginning, uh, from version 44 back to the first release indicating the dates and revision classes along the way for about the last, oh, what is that, seven versions or so, we are providing you PDF and DOCX versions. And then we have diffs for the past three. So again, give us feedback on this. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you find this useful. <laughs> That's good. Good feedback. Continuing with landing pages. Um, those of you who are familiar with them already might have noticed that we, we have some development resources on the landing pages. Uh, this occurs towards the second half of each landing page, and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, these cover things like copyrights, trademarks, um, uh, patents, and things of that nature. In our most recent release, we've added license programs, uh, which provides a link where you can access Microsoft's patent map, and this will allow you to view all of the protocols that are associated with a specific license program. So this is a, a, a section of a landing page. It's not the entire landing page. I zoomed in a little bit so you'd be able to read it. Um, underneath development resources, you'll notice the new area that I've highlighted, license programs, um, and the link to the patent map, which looks like this. On the patent map, you can select an individual Windows Protocol document, uh, as I've done here, I've selected one of mine. This is MS RDP EGFX, the uh, graphics pipeline extension for RDP. When you select an individual Windows Protocol document, you will see at the bottom of the page all of the associated US patent numbers, all of the associated patent applications, uh, and then all of the associated license programs as well. In addition, in the same section on the landing pages, we have added a new support section. Uh, this is very concise. We didn't want the email to get lost, so it's very, it's very short and to the point. If you have questions or need support with, with Windows Protocol documentation, you can send mail to that address, doc.help at microsoft.com. I think you heard that address this morning as well. 
Um, so please do send email with any feedback or questions you may have. Obviously, for technical issues, you, you should continue to use your, uh, your normal support pathways. But questions or suggestions or gripes about the documentation itself, um, feel free to send mail to us. Now let's take a couple minutes to talk about protocol errata. Um, some of you may be familiar with this. This is not as new as the other features I've been talking about. Um, in fact, we've been doing this, I think, for about three years now. But the reason I wanted to mention it here, while I have a captive audience, is because uh, as I've met many of you at IO Labs and other events, it's not uncommon to find that uh, implementers are still not familiar with the document errata. Um, and that's, that's very unfortunate because this is our chief pathway for bringing document corrections uh, to you on a, a rapid cadence every, every couple of weeks. Um, what are errata? Errata is just the Latin word for errors. We use this as kind of a catch-all term. Uh, we define it as content issues, as you see here in previous published versions of protocol documents, that might impact you as an implementer. Examples might include outright errors, uh, or it might be missing information in normative content in the document, um, or it might be errors in the use cases or the, uh, the examples in our protocol documents or in our overview documents, which contain a number of examples. Why do we do errata? The main reason is to bring corrections and, and updates and clarifications to you as rapidly as possible. Uh, we, we uh, want to ensure that the protocol documents that we publish are as accurate as they can be, as complete as they can be. We can't republish documents all the time. Uh, documents are typically updated three, maybe four times a year, but we publish errata every two weeks. And any issues that you report to uh, support engineering, they make their way to us and we want to reflect them in the documents as rapidly as possible, so we found that publishing errata online is a very good way to do that. If you haven't seen the errata yet, then I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, there's a slightly different navigation in the table of contents to find them. They're, they're organized at a slightly higher level. So they are under protocols, then errata, and then Windows protocols errata. Um, they're essentially one level above uh, the, the Windows protocols because there are other kinds of errata as well. Errata for Office protocols or uh, Internet Explorer or, or what have you. Um, I should also note that if you look today, there aren't very many right now. Only five or six, I think, published last week. Uh, the reason for that is that we archive them on a periodic basis. Anytime we publish a new version of a Windows protocol document, we archive the active errata associated with that document. Why do we do that? There are a couple of good reasons. One is so that the live errata online don't become extremely lengthy, and cumbersome, difficult to read, uh, difficult to sort and keep track of. But more importantly, when we publish a new protocol document, it by definition incorporates all of those changes that we had previously published as errata. So it would be confusing or misleading even if we continued to keep those in an active errata format. Um, they are by nature folded into the document. But we do archive them. Uh, they are stored on Azure and we provide links to those past errata in PDF format. So you're, you're always welcome to refer to those. Likewise, if you are using our landing pages, for example, and you download a previous version of a protocol document, you can also find and download the associated archived errata for that version. This is what errata look like. Uh, they are organized at the protocol document level. So this is one for MSRDP BCGR. This is, again, one of my protocol documents. Um, notice in the shaded region at the top, there are links to RSS and Atom feeds. So you can subscribe to these feeds, which we update every time we publish errata. Uh, you can read them in any feed reader of your choice. And if you have push notifications enabled, you'll find out uh, immediately as soon as we publish errata. Uh, we also maintain a blog on MSDN where we announce errata there as well. Underneath the shaded section, you'll notice here is where we have links to previous archived uh, errata files for this uh, protocol document. 
you can see that this particular one has been released three times since we started the errata process. Uh, and then underneath that are the active live errata. Uh, something to note is the document version. That's very important. That indicates which version of the protocol document these errata apply to. In this case, this is again another very mature protocol. This one is up to version 43. And uh, you can see the date that the errata were published and a description. In the description, we try to be concise, but we want to provide you enough specific information to know whether this erratum actually applies to your implementation or not. So we indicate very clearly exactly where the change is, which section or sections, why the change was made, summarize what the change was, and then we provide very specific before and after text. So you can see what the original text was and what the changed text is. Uh, in some cases, we may find that changes are extensive, in which case we may publish a diff document instead. And if that were the case, you would see the errata publication date and then under the, the description, a general description, but followed by a link to a diff doc that you could download and view with red line marking throughout. Um, once in a while, if changes are so extensive that even a diff doc is, is uh, going to be cumbersome, then we may, in fact, republish the document. So I'd like to give you a quick look at a project that we have currently underway. Um, we're working on bringing skew to role mapping tables into some of our Windows Protocols documents. Um, previous to this, this kind of information was often buried in product behavior notes in one form or another, maybe uh, varying from document to document, maybe not as discoverable, um, and certainly not as easily visualized. Um, as all of you know, protocols uh, support different kinds of roles. A, a very traditional example is similar to the one you see here, a client role and a server role. Uh, but some protocols support more than two roles. Some support different kinds of roles. Um, in addition to that, we have the various Windows product SKUs that support the protocol. And each product SKU might support one or all or some of those roles. So we realized it might be helpful as a visualization tool to provide tables like the ones you see in this screenshot um, showing exactly which product SKUs support which protocol roles. So in this case, we have two tables. We have a table of Windows client SKUs going from Windows 7, 8, 8.1, up to 10, and a table of Windows Server product SKUs from Windows Server 2008 up to the most recent Windows Server 2016. And for each of those product SKUs, you can clearly see which protocol roles are supported and which are not. Um, this is underway now. This will be rolling out in um, updates to our documents to come. So please uh, give us some feedback on this. Let us know if it's useful to you. Let us know if you'd like to see anything different about it. We would welcome the feedback. So in the time we have left, let's take a quick look at recently added protocol documents. Um, the thing to remember here is there are quite a few of them. We, we keep very busy uh, for a team of nine. Uh, in recent releases, we've added uh, quite a few new protocols. Um, and again, this is, just under, this is just Windows protocols that I'm talking about. There also are new SQL Server protocols, and then there are other protocols in other parts of the company. Um, we've added 15 new protocol documents since uh, the release July 2016, about 11 months ago now. Um, this is many, many hundreds of pages of new documentation, um, new examples, and uh, we hope you will take a look at these and provide us your feedback. Let's take a look at what they are by, by technical area. So we'll start with networking. Um, and in each of the following slides, I'm going to also point you to the overview document or documents that are relevant to these new protocols. Um, I'm not going to describe these at length. We would be here for another hour. Um, but if you see your technical areas up here, areas that are of interest to you as implementers, then t do take note of these new protocols in case you, uh, they escaped your notice before. Uh, so under networking, the, uh, the relevant overview document uh, for you is, the, uh, is MSNAPOD. That's the Network Access Protection Protocols Overview. We have five new protocols in this technical area since last year. Uh, MSCDP, 
that's Connected Devices Platform Protocol version 3. MSDHA, that's the Device Health Attestation Protocol. MS MICE, that's the Miracast over Infrastructure Connection Establishment Protocol. MS NCNBI, a Network Controller Northbound Interface. MS NCT, Network Cost Transfer Protocol. So if any of these are of interest, do take a look. In the directory services technical area, there are a couple of overview documents that you might want to take a look at. MSADF-SOD, that's the Active Directory Federation Services Protocols Overview. And MSADOD, that's the Active Directory Protocols Overview All Up. Um, two new protocols in this area since last year. MSDVRJ, Device Registration Join Protocol, and MSKPP, uh, which is the Key Provisioning Protocol. Also new in security and identity management, um, we have several overview documents that will be of interest here, including MS AuthSOD, Authentication Services Protocol Overview, MS AZOD, Authorization Protocols Overview, MS CERSOD, Certification Services Protocols Overview, and uh, MS RMSOD, which is the Rights Management Services Protocol Overview. We have three new protocols in this technical area. MSHGSA, which is the Host Guardian Service Attestation Protocol. MSKPS, which is another key related protocol. This one is Key Protection Service Protocol. And MSOIDCE, which is the OpenID Connect 1.0 Protocol Extensions. In file, fax, and printing services now, uh, the overview documents seem to be multiplying. We have several here. They're organized by uh, the general area, whether it's file access services, file services, print services, storage services, or virtual storage. And we have three new protocols in this technical area since last July. Two of them are Hyper-V, two of them are file formats. Uh, MSHRL is the Hyper-V replica log file format. MSHVRS is the Hyper-V remote storage profile, and MSVHDX is the virtual hard disk version 2, point, or version 2 file format. We're almost done. Let's press on. <laughs> two more slides. Uh, remote connectivity, this is my area, as I mentioned, RDP. Uh, the, the most germane overview document here is MSRDSOD, which is the Remote Desktop Services Protocols Overview. Uh, there's one new protocol since last year. This is MSRDP EAR which is the RDP Authentication Redirection Virtual Channel. This protocol essentially spans the RDP space and the sort of authentication area. Um, it could equally be co-located, in fact. And then finally, in the Application Services technical area, where you can see the overview documents pertain to message queuing, uh, the Microsoft.NET framework, and transaction processing services, here we have one new protocol, MSVAPR, which is the Virtual Application Publishing and Reporting Protocol. So long story short, many new protocols. Um, each product release usually brings anywhere from one or two to uh, quite a handful. So if you aren't familiar with some of these, um, then take advantage of the time you have with us to learn more, and then do take a look at them and let us know what you think. That brings this to a close. I do want to add as a postscript, uh, I think you heard that this this morning, but we have a booth, a documentation booth, where uh, you can meet some of us. We have some swag that may be of interest. We have a, a front and back one-page document that summarizes some of the key points about Windows Protocol documentation that you can take with you. And of course, we can, uh, we can answer questions, um, and you can give us feedback direct face-to-face. Today and tomorrow, it's in Building 20 near the lunch area. And Wednesday and Thursday, it's in this building, in Building 25. So uh, thanks very much for your kind attention. And I'll take any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. I have a template question in general. When I, um, many, many years ago, 10 years ago almost, I was actually contacted to write one of the docs in the set. Mm. And, and I, I, I Oh, thank you. And I got to do that. That was great. Wonderful. Um, the, back then, you have a lot of guides, guidelines now. There were a lot of guidelines then, but they have changed. They've mm. evolved. 
one of the things I was specifically told when I when I started writing uh, was that I needed to write something that a recent CS grad could read and implement from. Hmm. Is that still there? Because, and the reason I ask is that I go through some of the documents now and the information is all there and it's all technically correct within, you know, the reason, within reason, but there's no, no information on, you know, how to think about something or how to look at a, a, a problem and, and consider. I, the one that gets me, for example, is how sync and async uh, headers work in uh, SMB2 is it just, it's not this, it's not explained mm -hmm. the, the technical information is there but there's no good explanation of how that really works yeah so you're so you're asking everyone heard the question uh, so you're asking whether are you asking whether that original guidance is still in force yes uh, I would say largely yes uh, but I think um, maybe the difference now is that we're uh, it's before my time that that writing documents would have would have gone out to uh, to somebody else to an implementer. Maybe Paul, do you remember anything about that? Paul has been on the team since essentially since its inception, and might remember something more about that. Well, I think that we had we did have a one time. Yeah. So everyone can so everyone can hear you, or you can get get really close to me. And, and, and this and recording. And, and Jim Jim can also actually kind of speak to this a little bit as well. There was there was a time where there there was some some documentation that that came early on, like the Windows Security Overview, um, and some of that documentation has been phased out because it was you know like the wrong focus and that kind of thing. And and some of the some of the information has been put into the overview docs. So for mm -hmm. sure, look at the overview docs. In fact, uh, there was one plug fest down. I think it was the one down in San Francisco, and I was I was talking to one of the implementers there, and they said we love these overview docs. Whenever I have a new person, I hand them the overview doc and said, "This is what we're doing. Read it." So definitely do look at the overview docs, okay? And 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 if you feel that there's there's some information that that would be really pertinent, you know, for for a particular situation, contact us and let us know, and, and we can we can take a look at it and consider it. Jim, did you want to add anything? I, I'm not sure who gave you that actual guidance. For the overview documents, we try to keep them at a level that any CS graduate can understand. But because interoperability is so complex, our rule of thumb is that we will give all of the pertinent technical in information to implement that document. And we're actually writing at a level of a experienced implementer who a developer who can implement a protocol in that area so for instance smb is a very technical area where you don't expect a, a college graduate to come in and start implementing we want the language in the document to be such that a college graduate can read it mm -hmm. at you know from a um a readability standpoint but from a technical standpoint we target an experienced implementer any area that you have a problem with where where you think that we're missing background that is necessary please uh, give us the feedback sometimes you'll find that information on msdn in more of a general area um, but for protocols, um, we would add informative information mm -hmm. that's that something different than the technical. So it'd, it'd either be informative in the document or in the overview document. Right. So yes, we, we'd like the feedback, but it's these documents are not meant to be a primer or a course in the, right. the specific right. area. And that's where we want to take the feedback. Yes. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the protocol documents, the beginning sections are labeled as normative. 
which means it's all the technically accurate information to be able to read it. Then we have informative sections that sometimes go into great detail with examples and background information. And we will take that um, information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? I think we might, might have a couple of minutes left. Okay, you're shy. Well, come see us at our booth uh, where we can uh, talk to you one-on-one -on -one and we can answer questions. Um, we can take your feedback there as well and uh, come get some swag and take our one-pager as well. Uh, thanks very, very much for your kind attention.